So what was going to happen with me and my marriage and my gayness and all the rest of it? Because it's also that it wasn't that we were constantly in touch, but we would see each other. There would be family occasions when we would be there. There were Christmas cards. There were, you know, all that stuff. I remember one, one time we were together and I got talking to him about it. I love him. I loved him. And he said to me, well, you know, we were talking, well, this is civil equality. We had the whole, because in my family, like yours, arguments all the time about all sorts of shit. And we didn't, if you were aggressive in an argument, it was not a sign of, in any sense of antipathy. It was, in fact, the more aggressive you were. <laughs> the happier everyone was. <laughs> yes, and the more, the more we understood that that's part of the process. And he said to me at one point, you know, but yes, I, oh, I wouldn't, I probably, you know, I understand you agree politically, but, you know, it's not a marriage, Andrew. And, and I remember thinking and saying at the time, you know, you're right from one perspective. It is not the sacrament of matrimony. It is not what the church has historically understood as a marriage. And I think it is, it is a civil marriage. It is not bound up with the profound theology that is rooted in the sex binary in Catholic teaching. It's not related to procreation, which is integral to marriage in the religious tradition. So you are right. And... We could make, have another argument about whether that should be the case, but of course you're right. And did I, was I wounded? Was I, did my relationship with him change? No, I think it deepened. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, so this book is in three parts, lost, found, and then this kind of odd part and at the end. And, and loss is about the death of my father and losing things and found is about discovery and, and finding my partner and falling in love. But I, I actually took our marriage, our actual wedding ceremony, and I put it in the and section because I do think it's such a wonderful kind of and in, in so many ways. I mean, it's it's the fundamental and, right? You know, Catherine and Casey or, you know, whatever two names or you're, you're, you're you're binding together in that moment and you're binding these lineages together. And it, it has this kind of, you know, contrary to your uncle to some extent, this sort of biblical feel, right? The forward march of generations bound together in this lovely way. But but also a wedding for, I think, almost anyone on the planet is the consummate and because the uncle is always there, right? <laughs> I mean, there are always people for whom your union, and I think this is true at least as often for straight people as for gay people, there, there, are, there are people for whom... The wedding is a moment when you decide to show up because you love someone, no matter what other feelings you are. You know, you love someone and you are bringing all other kinds of things into that moment, which was certainly the case for us. You know, I think there were probably an equal number of people at our wedding who thought it was really quite strange because we were two women getting married in, in the, you know, the absence of, a, of any clergy, although my partner is quite devout and, you know, outdoors and wearing suits and, you know, with, without all kinds of you know, the, the, the kind of conventional things that attend a wedding. And, and you know, sitting, you know, in the same aisle were, were just as many people who thought the whole thing was terribly conventional. And, you know, <laughs> what is this wedding nonsense anyway? And, you know, here you are with your vows and your pretty readings and your cake. And this is all very, you know, this is all a bit, bit you know, stayed. So, you know, there, there's there's a lot of Isn't and that, that happens at weddings, I think. And I, I found it quite wonderful, to be honest. <laughs> Isn't that kind of a metaphor for America right now? Mm. Except, except in America right now, one half of the pews are yelling at the mm. other and the others are yelling back mm -hmm. as opposed to showing up because there is a bigger project here. It's not necessarily about us. It's about the country or about the Constitution or about America. That we, we, At some point, we can't let this, we can't lose the end or we are finished. Mm. But there's also that sense of duty. You show up. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I hope it's for a metaphor for America in the sense that I, I very much hope the union holds. And yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I didn't mean to enter, <laughs> to add some sort of political piety to this moment. But I, but I, and the other thing I wanted to say is that, and I'm so happy we did it in this conversation, is that we didn't talk about the sex of the person you were marrying until mm. you used the pronoun she. Mm. And that's also a really brilliant part of this book. I'm not sure whether you're aware of it. I kept thinking, what if I hadn't known anything about this person, but heard her for half the book talk about her dad and blah, 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 before talking about her partner, and then lo and behold, the partner is a woman. And 
there is not a single thing in the book, I don't think, that tries to push this into some sort of gay thing. It is specifically a lesbian love affair, but it is a human story that I think any heterosexual person could easily understand. This is a huge achievement. I, I mean, I, I've been hoping my whole lifetime to read books like this in which there doesn't have to be a song and dance about this. We don't have to clear our throats and like, and we, we queered our way through. It's just, no, you're humans. And not only that, but you add this extraordinary other detail, which is that your partner is this devout Christian. And again, that's, not, that's certainly not where your father was coming from. But it's an and nonetheless, and you're not, that is not something that cannot be bridged. In fact, it's partly why you love her. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of you to say that it's a huge achievement, and I think it is, but it isn't my huge achievement, right? I mean, it's a huge achievement on the part of the culture. And in fact, if either of the two of us sitting at this table deserve credit for it, it is certainly you, not me, meaning I didn't help bring about the shift that enabled, made it possible to write a love story between two women that is not received by the culture as a lesbian love story. In fact, to be perfectly honest, I've been slightly shocked by the extent to which <laughs> that's been true. I mean, I, you know, I've talked about the love story. I, you know, I talk quite a lot about grief. I'm always very happy when people want to talk about love because to me, this whole book is about love in various ways, but I talked about it a fair amount. And I, it's just been so not queer, which has been an interesting experience for me. I mean, I, I, I came out and came of age at a time when it did still, still feel urgently necessary to assert one's queerness and one's lesbianness and, and the nature of one's relationship. And, you know, in part that was because it was it was not evident that there was going to be public space for it. You know, this was before Obergefell, before gay marriage, before, you know, many of the, I mean, before I said, we, we might be in a little interregnum here, but it was certainly this kind of lovely moment when it, it felt possible to imagine that, that at least in this country for now, our lives, you know, as a lesbian couple with a child now, we're um, really relatively safe, stable, politically, and, and, and frankly, fairly mainstream. 